and it kind of leads us to preparedness as far as you know, um, you know what we're going to discuss. You know, our policies are for your safety, um, and at this point, despite things being, you know, whatever you call it, pause, um, or maybe pow, we don't know at this point, but policies still need to be in place, you know, until we're certain that we can change things. That means, you know, the, restri the restrictions have to be as they are. But that doesn't go without us looking at uh, the next phase. If it is, if it is going to continue to get quiet, you know, what do we do? Uh, we are in conversation with some of you, the groups here. We know that relaxing any restrictions would impact neighborhoods, um, and so that wouldn't be good either. So, um, you know, as we move on, you know, whatever you guys' suggestions are, whatever your concerns are. We will try to match what the policies are, you know, to whatever restrictions we have. But at this point, um, the hazards are still out there and could could uh, come up pr pretty quick. So we have to be air on the side of safety. So the restrictions are going to be in place for, you know, a bit longer. Like the eruption, you know, I cannot tell how long. But that's going to dictate, you know, what we do. Some questions have come up about, um, you know, authority, about our restrictions, and the law. Basically, you know, we're operating within our authority. The 127 Alpha, as far as emergency operations, allows us to enact laws to keep public safe, to um, keep infrastructure safe, uh, to keep government facilities safe, and so. Uh, you know, the restriction in the areas, whether it's the mandatory area or the restricted residence only area, it is enforceable. And lastly, as uh, Tina related to, you know, we are working closely with them. Uh, she identified some of the possible precursors that might happen as far as seismicity and and tilt that might happen at Kilauea so you know we're we're conscious of that making sure that if any changes occur we are make sure we're getting the messages out to you and that comes back to you to make sure that you are able to receive our messages you know whatever avenue you're going to receive them whether it's going to be text through your phone email uh, whether you're checking social media, Facebook, or, or Twitter. Make sure you're receiving our messages. So that's all I have for this evening. Thanks. Thanks, Talmadge. Okay, so now we are moving into the question and comment period. So let me um, reiterate how it's going to go. It's going to be the same as last time. So basically, it's going to be the format as you folks get a chance to speak. We're all going to be listening. The, um, the government folks here are going to be paying attention to what questions they need to answer in a little bit. Um, Ron is going to do some live recording tonight. So basically, he's going to be taking down the gist of what people are saying and grouping it in sort of areas, like if it's a question for civil defense or a question for planning department or a question for R&D. He's going to sort of group those together, and you'll see that happening up there. And we'll just take you one at a time, um, and we'll be done when we're all done. So you don't have to think of something right now. If something someone says sparks off a question or comment, and you just hop online, or if you don't want to stand for a really long time, you can wait till you can just wait uh, or just sit down on the bench there if you can't stand for a long time. And then, and a reminder to to be heard by the group. If you can kind of put your mouth right up to the mic, it would be great. Oh, hold on. We don't have the volume yet. My name is Allegra Perhaze. I live in Wawa. Okay, Allegra from Wawa. Thank okay. you. So at the last meeting, speak closely. At the last meeting, we were told there was going to be an emergency tower put up someplace and that it would help the cell coverage. That was two weeks ago. We've heard nothing again about that and it was not on the agenda tonight. So 
So that's my question, what's happening with that, because we have no cell coverage. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Allegra. Next. My name is oh, Mark. Eric, Sa can you, um, or maybe you can combine. My name is Mark Figley from Leilani, Leilani Estates. And okay, so that was Mark from Leilani Estates? Yes. Okay, go a little closer to the mic if you can. Yes, Mark Figley from Leilani Estates uh, on Malama Street there. And I'm wondering what's being considered, what's being done about a long-term uh, no return zone. You know, for example, I don't believe anybody's gonna be able to return to the middle of Fisher 8. So can they return to the edge of it or the base of it or how far what's going to be safe uh, i know there's you know where is that zone where that you know new crater is that um, people are just not going to be able to return to is it, i mean at some point that has to be addressed um, and that's a government function of government so i'd like to know what our government is thinking about on that point thank you mark uh, next person, and hold on, let us adjust the mic for you here. I know how to do it. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Renee Sirocusa. I live in Ka'ohe Homesteads. I almost had it in 2014, so I know what a lot of these people are going through, even though I did not lose my home. I want to thank you for changing some of the parts of the format of, of these meetings, and um, bringing back the Hawaii Volcanoes Observatory uh, part of the agenda because it was really missed the, the last meeting. I want to point out that people have been out of their homes, have lost everything, have been totally displaced since May 3rd, basically, and there is an intense craving for return to normality, to normalcy. I don't know what the proper adjective would be here. Um, and you don't seem to really be taking it into consideration. So at the last meeting, Talmadge came out with his whole thing about the, um, the placards, and half of what he was saying sounded like military martial law. And this did not sit well with people the, all they want to do is, if possible, if their homes are still there, to be able to return to them as soon as possible. But we're not getting any assurances that civil defense is revisiting their decisions about where to draw the lines. All they're saying is, these are where the lines are and that's it and we know what's best for you. And that just doesn't cut it. That attitude shows no respect for the people in this room. And I think what we really would like to hear is some reassurance that civil defense is gonna to continue to monitor the situation with a view to making changes in their position where warranted. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. Hi, my name is E.J. Patterson, and I'm in the OPE Cow area. E.J. from OPE Cow, can you move yes. a little closer to the mic? All Thank right. you. So uh, my comment is also on the cell tower. Um, we have no communication in the area. At one meeting, it was said that we would receive text messages from, from civil defense. We do not. And um, somebody answered from AT&T and replied that they were looking into uh, emergency or a temporary s cell service uh, for Leilani, uh, possibly Seaview. But OPE Cal is small. We have no representatives to really push for small communities to get cell service. But it's really critical for us. We have no contact down there. So I. From AT&T, we hear nothing but confusion. Oh yes, maybe in three months, maybe, oh, we're looking into it, but we have nothing definitive. And they say it's not gonna, what they're, do, what they're looking at is not gonna cover OPE Cal. So we would like some help for the small areas. Thank you. Thank you, EJ.
I'm Michael Steele. I'm Michael sorry. Steele. Michael, can you come a little closer to the mic, please? I can indeed. I Thank can also you. speak louder. Um, I have a house that's in the GTFO zone. I'm not living there. I'm living at a different house right now. I'd like a com to make a comment about several things I've heard tonight and what I've heard over 13 weeks. For your safety is a major issue. There's not a person in this room that does not share that goal. We are all interested in our safety. The difference is the tactics that one takes to enable that safety. That's where we are frustrated. I heard statements about involving the residents in things going forward, but the track record of the last 13 weeks has been involving residents at a zero level. So I have no confidence that there will be involvement in the budget distribution or anything else going forward based on what's happened in the last 13 weeks. I heard a mention of experts in the room. There are a lot of experts in this room who are residents and we've not been involved and therefore let's use all the resources. My final point is about the Aloha etiquette. I believe the residents have been following those. I wish that the people running the meetings and the experts also followed them. It's, there's been a point made about respectful and avoiding repetition. Exactly those things. We don't need repetition. We need movement going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. My name is Brian, and I live at Stubborn Woman Farm behind the barricade at uh, Papaya Farms Road. And uh, Brian, I'm Brian, for us to hear you, you've got to put your mouth pretty okay, close so to the Okay, so I'm mic. wondering how many Hawaiians are in this room tonight? Yeah, okay, so I see zero Hawaiians here, right? It's all a bunch of Howleys complaining, right? Yeah, there's one. Okay, so we got one Hawaiian, oh, two, all right. Yeah, so what I want to say is Hawaiians first, right? All you whining people. Hey, man, Pele is not our God, not our deity. We grew here, right? Yeah, that's those guys. Not us. We're from somewhere else. Yeah, it's not our God. It's not our deity. We have no right to the lava. Everybody's talking about, oh, yeah, lava tours and all this stuff. It's the Hawaiians first. Those guys, they're, they're the ones that, that were here before us. Yeah, one minute, thanks. I can't get it done in one minute. I wanna thank the DLNR, the police, all the first responders for all the great stuff they're doing. Hey man, the government needs to step aside. There's a lot of people that will put in roads without the government's help. There's all kinds of stuff that we can do for Puna without the government's help. Where do we start? Housing. Hey, man, 30 seconds. I can't get it done in 30 seconds. Let's have an environmental impact for anybody who's going to build a house within 1,000 feet of the ocean. You're killing the ocean with your gray water putting it in. We have a fresh start. We have a new beginning. You know, the tourism. 5,000 tourism, 5,000 people a day coming into Puna. Yeah, and we're tied directly through the government to Kona. Yeah, so we have to deal with those guys because our tax dollars are tied in with theirs. The federal money is tied in with theirs. Time's up. Thanks, Brian. Evening, yeah, that works. My name's Ian, I actually live in HPP, but I actually have friends who are in Leilani and Nodi Farms that are, weren't able to make it today. Ian, can you step just a little, a little closer to the mic? It's sure. like you're almost on it. Okay, um, but they had some questions they're hoping to get some answers for, so I'm just gonna read them off for them. Um, which government agency is responsible for the official response to this event? Often when talking to a department, they'll say, oh, that's not my responsibility, send you to a different department which will often say, that's not my kuleana, and send you back to that other department, or maybe to another department. Apparently, during a disaster, an incident command system is used, and one government agency is put as incident command, responsible for coordinating activities of the other agencies. Who is incident command for this eruption? Next question, uh, for DLNR, or I guess whoever can answer. Um, 
As the DLNR officers have discretion in issuing citations, how do they support citing residents looking for lost dogs or walking in their own neighborhoods, potentially leading to $5,000 fines and a year in jail? If the citations apparently were intended to punish looters, why have they not been used this way and instead are punishing many affected residents trying to go about their daily business? Uh, following up on something asked but not answered last time, uh, still, um, when we, when they get back to Leilani, are they able to take a bike ride or walk their dog without risking a citation? How can safety concerns be the reason we're allowed to drive past seven roads towards Fissure 8 to get to our property but not stop at the first road to visit a neighbor? Uh, last question. In the land acquisition plan in the recovery uh, plans we saw for the impacted area in Lava Zone 1, does this total include all properties inundated, damaged, isolated, and still accessible? Is the participation in this uh, impacted area plan entirely voluntary? Or is condemnation or eminent domain being considered to acquire these parcels? Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, hi, my name is Andy Andrews. I live in Leilani Estates. Andy, there was a letter Andy from Leilani Estates. Thank you. Uh, uh, there was a letter delivered today to the following people. Uh, David Ige, Harry Kim, Talmadge Magno, Russell Ruderman, Eileen O'Hara, uh, Maisie Hirano, Brian Schatz, Tulsi Gabbard, Diane Lay, Ron Whitmore, Will Okabe, Paul Ferreira, Sam Gelsma, uh, Darren Rosario, and uh, Ken Hara via his, uh, via his colonel who's here tonight, and Representative-elect Ashley Kirkowitz. Uh, here's the letter. Uh, this is specific to Leilani, but I hope it applies to all of you. We are residents of Leilani Estates. From May 3rd until now, we have been left out of decisions that are profoundly affected of our lives. Some of these decisions have very negatively impacted our freedoms, homes, assets, and our community. Going forth, we want to have input in these decisions. We want to work with you, our elected representatives and civil servants to maintain and rebuild a safe and sustainable community. Transparency of government is an expected right in a democracy. It is our right to be included in your decision processes regarding any proposed law change or ruling that has potential to impact our community, homes, and our guaranteed freedoms. We expect to be apprised of, prior to implementation, any action or decision that could affect our personal and community security, our property values, our right to occupy or gain access to our homes, our neighborhood, or any other change concerning Leilani Estate. States. Further, no regulatory changes specific to our community should take place, should take effect without our consult and consent. We expect to be invited to our government's meetings of any agency or any agenda or purview regarding Leilani Estates. We will be informed of said meetings, agendas, times, and locations as soon as they are known. We will designate Le Leilani Estates representatives who will be alerted of and if deemed relevant attend these meetings, one or two representatives per meeting. If we are unable to attend, we then expect the minutes of these meetings to be made available to us immediately and before any consequential decisions are rendered. Together, we can move forward to safeguard, repair, and restore our Leilani Estates and Pune. We look forward to your rapid implementation of these policies. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Leimana. I live between Opikau and Kalapana. Did you say Leimana? Yes. Can you come a little closer to the mic? It's hard to hear you. You gotta go. You gotta be very close to it, like an, half an inch. Your mouth half an inch from the mic. Yeah. There Leimana. goes thirty seconds. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, we won't start the timer until you're ready. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my concern is. Uh, being a person behind the lines since May on Highway 130, I have been blocked from access to the, our coast, uh, most of the coast. Um, instead of some, since we're, we've been screened up here in Pahoa to go inside with placards, we have two police that cost us about between two and three thousand dollars a day to sit in their cars to make sure the people that are live down there don't go anywhere. 
I don't agree with this, and I agree with everybody else that says we need to be heard. We have never really been, our, our, your version of hearing us since 1983 is subservient to the people that live on Oahu. I've seen this since 1983. I hope this changes very soon because I would like access to my own coast. Now other people are being allowed in, but I would encourage the government to consider Red World the first one to be opened up to the boat ramp, to the b new beaches. Finally, we have some sand, but we're not allowed in. I would say that should be priority number one for opening a road. Thank you. Thank you, Leymana. My name is Robert Golden. I live in Leilani Estates. Robert from Leilani. Can you come a little closer to the mic, please? Okay. So Talmadge, when I was here two weeks ago and spoke, we asked for the moving of the mandatory evacuation line to Maku, to the part of Maku from Leilani North. We want to be able to open the community center there for Leilani. Uh, so far, we have heard nothing back about that proposal. We are planning to hold a Labor Day celebration there, a way of reclaiming our community. We want to do that with your blessing. We, in fact, we'd like you to be there to show you, to show us your, your um, affection and your concern for us. So please make that happen. I, I do want to say that some of the, the way it impacts on me and maybe other people here when we hear the words, we are concerned, we know what it's like, we understand. At some point, it, for me, it becomes words. I'm not doubting your intention, but we want to see action. We want to see some motion forward that shows us, yes, civil defense wants us back in our homes as soon as safely possible. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Perry, um, Noni Farms Road, Hale Kamahina area. Okay, Jennifer, um, thank you. I have. I'm just repeating your name so we can make sure we got okay. it. I can't see behind me. So I have two questions. The first, when we evacuated, we took all of our farm equipment out, you know, old trucks, tractors, trailers. Will we need um, a placard to bring them back in? Simple question. Um, some of those trucks don't really have um, highway licensing still. And my second question is, for those who have lost their homes, and now that there's sort of a lull in the lava activity, is there a way that they could be escorted in to see what's there? Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. My name is Joyce Folena. Joyce, I'm what neighborhood? Folena, F as in Frank, O-L-E-N -E -N as in now A, Folena. And what neighborhood? Leilani. Leilani, thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. I'm in the top of Leilani. Uh, my, my home is safe from Pele. We're about two miles from the flow uphill. I feel it for the people who have lost their homes and I hope they are given back the ability to have new homes uh, my concern is that having listened to quite a few people tonight in their testimony, I do augment their wishes to become more involved and directly involved with various agencies that help us. That would be beneficial, it would be moral support, and it would be very hard physical reality in the appropriate direction. So. I'd like to thank Civil Defense for all the um, messages in our smartphones and emails uh, because it keeps us informed as to what's going on. I don't have a computer. I have a smartphone. A lot of us don't have computers. Um, also, <clears throat> I'd like to mention that we recognize and support the overflights of government helicopters and we severely oppose the abnormal high amounts 
of flights from the tourist agency. We feel agencies, we feel that these um, enormous amounts of tourist flights not only impact us, the residents, in a very negative way, but they also create a hazard for necessary government flights because there are just too damn many of them, the uh, tourist flights. Um, also, I'd like to thank um, the people that are guarding our subdivisions, and I hope that the folks that need to be walking their dogs or et cetera or checking their, their properties are treated in a humane and acceptable legal manner. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gregory T. Smith, um, Leilani Estates. I'm sorry, what was your first name, Jerry? Gregory, G-R-E-G-O-R-Y. -E -E Thank you, Gregory from Leilani. Um, uh, the, you know, I haven't been to one of the community meetings since May 3rd. We were evacuated the third day of the eruption. We moved up the mountain and then we finally, a month ago, we moved back home. Everything seems to be going right so far um, but again the problem that we're having I mean uh, is the helicopter overflights and I hope that our local officials will do everything they can to push and pressure F FAA to get these helicopters out of the sky um, years ago we had the same problem when Kalapana was erupting heavily and I mean, the sad thing of it is that this industry um, has no respect for us on the ground. It was bad enough for uh, our community to be torn up, but to have this constant noise. Um, I'm a veteran of the Vietnam era. Um, I can't handle it. It drives me nuts. I can't handle this. So um, do all you can. Thank you. Thank you, Gregory. Um, before we before we do repeats, can we can we um, let's let everyone who okay. Uh, you're okay. Okay, he's gonna. I'm sorry, defer I just to you. forgot. Okay, one say question. Your, say your name again, sir. Robert Golden from Leilani. Robert Estate. from Leilani. So, um, Tomage, we would like to know when Helco will be allowed back in given this pause, at what point would you say it would be okay for Helco and Spectrum to come back in to repair the lines? If we could have that data, that would be very helpful. Thank you. My name is Don, um, living in Leilani Estates. Don um, from Leilani, can you step a little yes. bit closer to the mic? And um, our residence is in the mandatory evacuation area. And first, I'd like to say thank you for all those who um, have given of themselves um, in this as far as assistance uh, to those who had needs and also to our state and county officials and to the guard and the local um, fire and police. They've been awesome. And also to the post office. They, they've been very unique in, the, in helping us. Amen? Amen. But one of, the, one of the individuals that really helped us out a lot was one of the FEMA workers, and her name was Maddie. And she shared the story where she was personally there in Katrina, how that she barely escaped, got on the roof of the house, and it was you know, uh, a, a long period of time before she was rescued, only to end up with 19 other people in her home. And she said, Mr. Miss Carroll, well, I just want to share something with you. This is going to be a marathon. You know, there's not an outline, you know, how it's all going to work out, but just stay focused and just move forward. And I really appreciated that. So two of the questions, and they're kind of like multiple questions. One is um, on the preliminary damage assessment. Will this be updated? Uh, will it be, you know, uh, will the county officials, as far as the building department, go and, and just do, you know, like a drive-by, you know, just assess at the house? Uh, this would be helpful for three reasons. One, insurance. And we all know what's uh, with some of the challenges there, just to document the status of the house. Also with FEMA and SBA. Uh, the second one is, is is unusual, and I just want to thank all those who work in the polling and everything. But I received this letter uh, from the election. It says this: Did you know that you're breaking both state 
and federal law, if you register to vote from an address you no longer live at. <laughs> yeah. And so what is legal re residency and how does that work as far as you being displaced? Nobody could give me a statue or a policy and so I was left where I didn't vote. And even though they said everybody else, I go, yeah, I could be the one that go tag your it. And so that was my other question. But let me leave you with this thought from Maddie. She said this, you can't change what happened, but you can change what's going to happen. Thank you. Uh, Tom. My name is Tom from Leilani Estates. I think a lot of I'm good- I'm sorry, um, I was just distracted because I was asking Ron something. What was your first name, sir? Tom. Tom from Leilani, thank you. Correct. Um, I think there was a, a wide coverage of questions today. I think covered lots of good territory. Can we get a copy of those questions and perhaps the answers? Thank you. Hi, my name is Heide. Heiden? Heide, H-E-I-D-E. Heidi, can you step a little closer to the mic, please, okay. in it's your neighborhood? Um, I'm not in a neighborhood. That's one of my problems. <laughs> I live in a, uh, surrounded by forest on six acres. That is, I lived there until about May 3rd, I think. And I'm presently living at the Milk and Honey Farm. And uh, I've been here before. I asked the same question, basically. And I filled out a paper, but I didn't get any answers yet. Uh, so here I am again. Um, I like to know when it's, if my driveway is safe. My driveway is 1,000 feet long. It uh, goes to my house that has cracks underneath it. And the cracks are getting bigger. The cracks on my driveway are getting hotter. They're way above boiling point by now. And uh, the, the driveway exits uh, just at the plates on 130. That's my only exit. My question was, how can I safely leave that area? Because FEMA says my house is habitable. My uh, foundation is not, but my house didn't crack up. And uh, the uh, contractors won't come up there to give an assessment of it. Uh, the water guy came up and said, yeah, you, the, how are you going to get a water truck up here to get my catchment cleaned out? So I'd like to know from uh, civil defense why my driveway is safe for now. And uh, what can I do? Can I drive up and down it? Can I uh, live in my house? Should I fix it myself? I mean, I have no idea what standards they are. Uh, FEMA told me, they turned me down twice already, this is my third go around with them, that they don't have any jurisdictions over the air quality or what kind of gases come out of the cracks. They're only concerned about the lava and the 6.9 earthquake, and now I got a proof that my cracks were there, uh, <laughs> appeared after the earthquake. So that's where I'm at. I, I have to get an, uh, an engineer over there. The cheapest I got so far, somebody coming out in three weeks, would be $1,600, and the other guy from Honolulu was $6,000. So uh, I'm 77 years old. I live on a very tight little budget. Now I'm renting, and I have storage fees and other expenses. So I like some help, and I like to know what is safe. And because your, my safety is supposed to be in your hands. And I invited everybody, civil defense, everybody to come up my driveway, check it out, look under my house. Thanks, Heidi. Okay, thank you. Hey, I want to thank Jennifer Ruggles for releasing the budget early and uh, showing that Puna got no money and Hilo got all the money, right? So, uh, our community, yeah, what are we gonna do? Where are our elected officials in this room? Where are they, right? Does anybody see anybody here? 
Yeah, okay. And left. Yeah, thanks. Um, anyway, I want to thank uh, all the first responders. Um, the issues are many, 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 and thank you. Okay, so the letter that was read earlier um, had 100 signers. Is there any last speakers? 126, pardon me, thank you for correcting me. Uh, yes. Hi, my name is Cynthia, I live here in Pune. Cynthia from Pune. I just wanted to address something that I heard earlier. I wasn't gonna speak, I don't usually speak. <laughs> um, <clears throat> kind of touched a core with me. I've lived here for most of my life, put up with different attitudes and accepted them. I would hate to see all of the Pune divided along racial intentions or backgrounds. We all need to be united. This affected everyone, doesn't matter your age, your race, your heritage. So that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. I'm Larita Buckley from Leilani. Larita? Larita. Thank you. My question is, I see these things uh, in the paper about the long-term plans. So long-term, my question is, are they really considering making Lava Zone 1 we can't live there. For people who are waiting for something to happen, our homes are still there. Can we go back to them? Will we be able to go back to them? I know it's still an up in the air question, but is there a consideration that we may not ever go back? Is there a consideration that Lava Zone 1 will not be habitable? If people are considering that option, I think we ought to know. That's my question. Thanks, Larita. I'm Tanya Lee from Leilani, the part Tanya, of Leilani. Tanya from Leilani. The part of Leilani where I'm living in my house. I want to know whether this is a water quality thing. Is the SO2 creating a, an acid rain situation for when it rains? I've lost a lot of my plants, but I basically want to know if I can take a shower in my catchment water if it's turning into acid rain from the volcano. Thank you, Tanya. Any last comment? I see someone coming. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy from Kapoho. Kathy from Kapoho. There's a lot of misinformation going around. One thing I've heard, and I'd like to know the truth, I've heard that people can go back to Leilani, but not their kids. Is that true? I know somebody that can't go back because they said they couldn't bring their kids back. What are they supposed to do? Pay their mortgage and rent somewhere else? How do you separate from your kids? Is that realistic? Has anybody else heard that? I've been told that this lady can't bring her kids back. This is not the, we're not gonna answer it okay. now. Okay, I just, just if, that's, out there, if yeah. that's one of those restrictions, if that's real, then they better think twice because people are paying mortgages and rent. What are they gonna do? Leave your kids, leave your house. They can't afford to do any of it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Okay, this is going to be our last one. Better be good. <laughs> Michael from Leilani. Michael from Leilani. The question about deeming houses uninhabitable made me remember that this limbo situation that many of us are in are caused by civil defense saying that's an uninhabitable zone or a mandatory evacuation. FEMA not recognizing the destruction of the home because it's not destroyed. And insurance not recognizing that it's payable because the house is still standing. 
So the question of definitions comes up if the situation is that houses are deemed uninhabitable, does that definition go to the insurance company that's insuring my home that if I can never get back to it, it is therefore destroyed? Or does that go to FEMA where FEMA will now recognize pseudo-destruction? That's the limbo that we're in because of all these different definitions and we're stuck in the middle. I see heads going. We haven't lost our homes except by human edict. Limbo. Limbo is a witch. Thank you. Uh, just quickly, uh, none of us here, none of us here are water quality experts, but you do have water catchment system experts at your disposal with the University of Hawaii. Uh, go to the ctar.hawaii.edu or slash Hawaii Rain website, and you can likely find answers to your questions right on the website. If not, you can email or call if you have more specific questions. And again, oh, sure. So it's really hard um, for us to have people responding if other people are having side conversations. Or we're, I know I, we gave you a little break and people want to chat. So if we can just wait till the end to do that, it would be really helpful because um, the people in the back, you know, might not be able to hear as well as people in the front. So we want to make sure that they're able to do so. Oh, I welcome Eileen O'Hara from our county council member from this district. And then also related to the concerns about helicopter noise, please do log your complaints at the plainnoise.com slash HHA website. Um, it's particularly important now as the civil defense and county agencies reconsider um, policies as the conditions change, that they be very aware of where there are continue, there continue to be issues with helicopter noise. So please do file those complaints. I think I saw Neil from housing here. There was a question about the housing, housing determinations. Is Neil still here? Roy, are you able to answer those questions or no? no? Sorry, we'll have to get back to you on the questions about how the damage assessments are updated. Roy, can you handle limbo questions? And then, uh, Talmud, you're up next with incident management. The damage assessment, the letters that you receive, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the uninhabitable letters were actually provided at the request of insurance companies. So if you had an insurance company who needed a determination of uninhabitable to give you rental assistance, then, <clears throat> and you didn't get a letter, we can provide you that letter. If you got that letter and you didn't need it or don't want it, you can throw it away because it was only sent to you and not to any insurance company. As far as um, the difference between what you consider damage and what FEMA and SBA will recognize as something that they can provide assistance, that has been something constantly in flux. Um, they are used to hurricane flood damage where the damage is quite evident and one time and you know it's there or it's not. This is an ongoing hazard where the damages continue to grow, and also damages that they are not familiar with, like air quality. So we are working with them. They are looking at their policies. It may change in the future. So just keep tuned. We'll let you know if we hear of any change in policy. But continue to keep the dialogue open with them. If you got denied in the past, stay persistent and go back and ask them for a reinspection. We'll talk to them about the cracks and access 
in terms of um, your driveway, um, but don't give up. If you think you got a valid claim, um, ask for an appeal. Okay, Talmadge, incident management and restricted area. Okay, I, I jotted down questions that I thought applied to me, so I'll just go down the list. So first on the cell coverage, the last side talked with the companies. Several options were coming up. They were gonna move uh, what's called a cell on wheels into that area along 137 area. Uh, also, the companies are considering other towers. Um, I guess now that the we're in this situation, the pause um, tower by PGV is being looked at. And so we're looking at increasing coverage for the area. As unfortunately, you know, things aren't moving as fast as you guys need them. Um, so I don't have any time frame, but that's the last conversation we had from with any of the cell companies. Um, you know, as far as the placards and the restricted movement, you know, that evolved for several reasons. One, you know, to allow for safety, you know, I'm repeating it again, for your safety. And as, as the issue of uh, looting came about um, and other illegal activity within the subdivisions, that's, that's, those are reasons why we had to make sure the placard system was in place, protecting both people's safety in there and also your property. As far as ICS, Hawaii County operates under a somewhat modified ICS, Incident Command System. It's called Command and Control, and it comes under Civil Defense, but all we do is manage all the other agencies. The mayor is the responsible party for everything. As far as the Leilani Community Center, you know, under this current situation, we're looking at everything, um, reassessing, working with HVO as to what the, the situation is and the status. Um, as I said earlier, as things go, go on, the pause maintains, you know, it's, uh, I guess, stable atmosphere. We'll consider opening up more area, but it's all in consideration of what we get from HVO. As far as the escorts for destroyed homes, we definitely, we've been providing escorts all along into the mandatory closure area to retrieve your property. And of course it was to you know, look at destroyed areas. Some areas we cannot get to because you know, of their total isolation, but I think we've been going, you know, supporting people that want to go see their, their property. Uh, we definitely, you know, escort them. Um, I know some people have taken aviation flights on their own, not supplied by us. Um, and we also can supply pictures as well, aerial footage that we have. So if anybody um, here or you hear of anybody that has destroyed property wants to go in, we can support that. Helco, um, they're not here tonight, but they have plans to go in here shortly do an assessment as to what it's going to take them to uh, put in any infrastructure back. But that's an initial ass assessment at this time. Let's see. Kids in Leilani, that's your own decision. I've talked to families with young kids. You know, definitely the area with fallout, with Pelly's hair, with uh, Tefra in that area. It's not a place for kids to be running around, you know, the potential of that stuff getting in their eyes as they play in the yard. It's not a very nice environment, but that decision is your own, especially with the, the high SO2. We call out the sensitive population, those with uh, diagnosed respiratory problems, elderly and the young. Those are the sensitive groups with SO2. We recommend they not be in SO2. 
But again, the decision is your own. That's all I have. Okay, as far as uh, including Leilani, um, we definitely would like that, to get your guys' consensus. Um, I hear differing information as far as who is the voice of Leilani. Um, if that leading group would come, you know, make contact with us, I think we do have that information, but uh, if that is the right group, you know, by your guys' uh, I guess consensus, your community association, if they speak for you, we'd definitely like to work with them uh, going forward as far as any decision making. Okay. DLNR? Lino, can you answer a question? Okay, the question is, why are people in their own neighborhoods being cited? In all honesty, if you guys remember, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Talmadge, ending of May, there are people complaining they wanted to go back to the residence. We let you guys back in. Well, not me. Timothy Finch let you guys back in. You guys remember when uh, Road 132 was cut off? We had a bunch of families stuck in there. The rescue had to be called in. If I'm not mistaken, HFD, along with Army, had to bring in helicopters to take people out. I hope you guys recall that. It's the things like this, not only for your safety, but for the first responders. If you guys don't know this, understand. Somebody get trapped in there at night. HFD choppers, by policy, will not fly in there to pick you up. What does that mean? Other first responders possibly would have to hike in there because of other people's interest in taking photos or whatever it may be. You put first responders at risk unnecessarily. Let me answer the question now. Residents, you want to go back to your residence like Tommy said, it's up to you. We don't have a problem with that. This is where the problem starts when people want to wander off from their residence. And that's true. People wander off, walk around. We don't have a problem. Stay in your property. It's okay. You have the right to be there. I remember Brian talking about Hawaiians. So why is it we got to keep Hawaiians out of there from walking around, but yet residents believe they have the right to walk around in the neighborhood? All in all, we're here for you guys' safety, bottom line. Okay? What is fair for one, fair for all. We can't handpick that Joe Blow walks in, doesn't have a placard, and we're going to cite him and residents wander off and we're going to let them go because they claim they're resident, that's not fair. Something happens, first responders got to go in. You guys may condemn us, which is cool, it's part of our job. We knew it when you took this job. At the very end, our job is to save your lives. That's it. You guys can call it any way you want. Blame us. We're okay with it. But my job, their job, is to save your life. So you guys can grumble all you want. My residents cannot go back in there. Trust me. Pele don't care. She will go off when she wants to go off. We have no control over that, like the gentleman said. We have control of our actions now. I ask you guys, before the last meeting, please... Think about the responders, first responders who got to go in there. I don't think that's a smart move.
Okay, we have Roy again from the mayor's office. Roy? Long-term planning? Or the budget? Oh, the, okay, the, the next two, cost for, yes, and long-term planning. Okay, as far as uh, the budget that you may have read about or seen on Facebook, that whole amount in the hundreds of millions is for Puna. So I'm not sure how you're reading the budget. Um, as far as the long-term planning and the policies about whether you can return or not, that is totally undecided. Um, and definitely you'll be involved in whatever decision is made. But that type of decision actually requires council dis decision making. It cannot be done administratively. So there will definitely be a venue for your involvement. Oh, can we get a co copy of the questions and the answers? Yeah, the answer is yes. We're gonna, you're going to post them online? Where, where online? Somewhere online. Civil defense. Well, to be determined. <laughs> 